Hey everybody, we're on experiment 14 and this one is called a pulsing glow and the idea behind this experiment is to get our LED to slowly kind of brighten and slowly dim and to do this in an oscillating fashion just like we did a number of experiments back. So I'm going to give the abridged tour of how this circuit works in fact, why don't we first just turn it on real quick and take a quick look. And let me double check. The circuit should be running at, uh, they recommend 9 volts. And this is actually, I'm going to call this part 1 of the uh, experiment because part 2, I'm finally going to be moving the components over to a perf board and doing some soldering to make a more permanent representation of this stuff. So I'm going to turn the power supply on real quick. And before I do, make sure we're all zeroed out. All right. So I'm going to bring this up to nine volts. Oops, that's the uh, fine control there. Here we go. So our course, bringing it up. To nine volts exactly. Looks like we're drawn about, well, at least to the granularity that my uh, power supply can tell, somewhere in the neighborhood of probably 10 to 14 milliamps. It just says 0.01 amps. So as you can see, it is kind of doing a nice little dimming effect on both directions, getting brighter, getting dimmer. Kind of like a heartbeat, kind of like the book's description indicated it would look. So it's pretty cool. A little bit more interesting than a uh, LED that just turns on and turns off. So, um, turn this back off for a sec here. So in terms of how this works, let me grab, grab my little tweezers or something for a pointer. Um, if we were to just look at the main components involved in this, let's just ignore resistors for a moment. And if we were to look at the fact that we have a put right here, and we've got a couple capacitors, and we've got an LED in play. Um, actually, you know what? The uh, tweezers aren't the best pointing device. I'm going to grab a pencil. Let's try that out instead. Okay, so um, over here from this angle, it might be a little tough to see. I brought the camera closer uh, to try this out this time. Um, we're coming from uh, positive. So really what we have is positive current um, running to the uh, anode of our put transistor. And we've got a, you know, connection to the, the gate uh, setting the uh, voltage threshold for this put. As we discussed in earlier experiments, this just sets the threshold at which point um, the channel between the anode and the cathode um, opens so the current can flow um, out the output pin. So we've got, you know, this, this supply of current um, ready to go through the put and it will output down this purple line and jump back over through this resistor and go straight out the LED. So the reason we have the capacitors at play is to help with our dimming effects and of course to uh, help us out with uh, breaking through the threshold set by the, uh, the, gate, the gate pin on this put. So like initially the um, amount of voltage hitting the uh, anode of the put is not high enough to cause the put to open. So in the meantime what happens is the circuit from here through the capacitor um, is, is charging the capacitor which is increasing the voltage pressure against the anode uh, pin of our put. And once it passes the threshold, uh, it then opens up, allows the 
current to flow and that starts to light up the LED. And when that happens, this capacitor quickly charges, right? Because it's charging this in, in parallel with it when it uh, lights up the LED. And then once the capacitor over here is discharged enough and we are no longer um, exceeding the threshold um, on the gate pin of our put, then there's no more power f you know, flowing out the out pin, uh, out pin of this, uh, or the, the cathode of this put. So this capacitor, which was quickly charged when the LED was lit up, now starts discharging to provide um, you know, the, the power supply. And what happens is the LED goes from its fully lit self and it gradually dims. And then, of course, these various values of resistors are here just to ensure that our, uh, you know, uh, capacitors are charging and discharging at uh, appropriate speeds so that we um, get the effect that we desire. And that's pretty much all there is to this experiment, at least the first part. And as you can kind of tell, the layout of this did not turn out as organized as I would have liked. Um, and that's just because I, didn't, I wasn't really looking ahead um, as I was building it to see, you know, what would be the most uh, appropriate orientation for all these parts. However, when I move on to the uh, perf board layout, I will be using the example in the book to kind of tightly couple all these together. And it'll be interesting because this will be the first time I've done a uh, more permanent, um, you know, soldering of all the components together. And we are instructed in the book to not use, oh, excuse me, my, my phone here. <laughs> Anyways, um, I will get back to you guys with experiment two.